Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Life Discussion with Pastor Rodney Evans. And today I got a special guest. My oldest son is with me, Jordan. Uh, we usually tell everybody we appreciate you for tuning in, and we do. We want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is down here, I believe, or it could be over there. Either which one, they'll know where it's at. Um, anything about our church, our personal ministry, we'll put through here because uh, I just want to talk with you today and, and get on the subject that we're talking about and not go through a lot of things today. So your mom was on the podcast last week with me. That's good guess. Yeah, she done a good job. So if you haven't listened to the podcast, we will put how to connect with that in the description below. Uh, and we talked about the same subject. We were talking about the, the Holy Spirit. And so we are going to continue that today with, uh, with Jordan. Last week with Teresa on the podcast, we just kind of reviewed a little bit, got her intake on what we've been talking about. Today we're going to continue with you, and we've kind of already talked a little bit about what we're going to be talking about. But the text we used was in 1 John 5 and 7, and it said, I'll let you read it. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. So we're talking really about the third person of the Trinity. I'm really not going into really the gifts, uh, tongues and etc. We're just talking about the person, the third person of the Trinity that lives in us. Because when you get saved, the Bible says that without the Spirit, none is His. So the Spirit's in you when you get born again. Yeah. And you know we could get in a debate with people and say, okay, if there's tongues or no tongues, we know what we believe. Uh, that's not what this message is about. Mm. It's just about the importance of the third person in your life. Yeah. And so that's kind of how we want to continue today and a little bit of overview. And I could be off a little bit, but pretty much with my research, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament spoken of about 81 times in different areas, different ways. Mm. And the first way is Exodus 13 and 21. It talks about the pillar of, uh, of a cloud and a fire. Mm. Now, I know you could go in more detail uh, with that probably. Um, but here it talks about the cloud that would cover them and then the, the pillar of fire also that would protect them and lead them. So when those things were going on where they were at, they were to stay still. Mm -hmm. And then when it lifted and began to move, they were to move. Mm -hmm. That was how back then the Holy Spirit would lead people. Yeah. To, with, am I right with that? Is that yeah. how you feel too? Yeah. And then in Leviticus 16 and 2, it talks about uh, God's presence over the mercy seat, which is a sign of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And here's the one I think that we'll talk about just for a few moments. is in Exodus 29 and 30. Yeah. It's the yerm and the therm. Am I, am I, thuming. Thuming. Uh, he's uh, just got, uh, you're accepted and you're going through what school? Uh, Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. Okay, and he's he got his four-year degree through University of Liberty, so we're very proud of him. Continues education, and he's a youth minister at the Gate. The Gate, Charlotte. So we're proud of the direction him and uh, I don't call my daughter-in-laws daughter-in-laws. I call them daughters. We're we're very proud of your wife and what she's accomplished and the things God's doing in her life. Also, um, let's talk about this for a few moments. Okay. Uh, this was in their their breastplate, correct? Yes. And Yerm, Yerm, as I said again, right? Yerm. Means light. Mm -hmm. Thermum means perfection or completion. And so it was placed in their breastplate. In other words, some people think it was like a, a, a piece or something like a yes or no. Yes. So they would ask a question, and the priest basically would pull out a yes or no. Is that correct? Yeah, that's pretty on much rolling the dice. Like rolling a dice, like a dice game. Yeah, it was very much like rolling a dice. And in fact, back in Proverbs, you actually see um, there's some uh, a prophetic kind of picture of this Urim and Thummim that says that, you know, it's the hand that rolls the dice, but it's actually every decision comes from the Lord. And so they believed that by throwing these things out, in a sense, uh, casting lots, uh, it, the Urim and the Thuming functioned very much like casting lots. 
Um, and so they believed that by casting lots or using the Urim and the Thummim that the Lord was actually guiding them by the results of what that thing said. And he did back then. Yeah. That was the way, that was in a sense, assisted, uh, instance was a substitute that we would say of the Holy Spirit like we experience today. Mm-hmm. You know, now he lives within us, the Holy Spirit. Then it was around. Yeah. And so this was a way, so they would go and ask the question uh, really to the priest if this is something they felt like God wanted them to do. And he would basically pull out yeah. a yes or no. Yeah. It was definitely a, a lesser um, a lesser form of what we have today through the indwelling of well, the Holy Spirit. Also, you brought up casting lots. Now, that was used in the New Testament. Yes. Uh, the disciples mm-hmm. used that. Mm-hmm. They was trying to decide who uh, the disciple was going to be. Mm-hmm. And so they did this, basically. Mm-hmm. And the wrong person got picked. Mm-hmm. So that shows you that that is no good under the new covenant. Well, you have to keep in mind, too, that that was before they had all received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That was yes. before um, any of them had... Um, I'm actually trying to pull up the exact... So it's in Matthew or Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through, 12 through the rest of the chapter, so 26. Um, and in that... Um, you always used to say and always crack me up because it's so true the more that I've got involved in church work and everything like that is there's been one there was one vote in the New Testament and they got it wrong yes and um, I think that that's true it it definitely I I think the writer of Acts which we all know to be Luke um, I believe Luke put that in there as kind of a I think it's kind of comical to kind of contrast um, the almost outdated form of receiving guidance from the Holy Spirit as in within the very next chapter they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then Peter gets up and prophesies and so mm-hmm. now the Holy Spirit the casting of lots and the umim, urim and thumim like it's no longer needed because now the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside of us well, and also when I uh, when I was growing up I know we never done that to you boys uh, but I was told to put a fleece before the Lord yeah and this is the same premise as you talk about this like you know we, they talk about a fleece in the Lord, and I think it was laying something out, and if water was on it, yep. it was to do this or that. And today, that's no good. Yeah. Because now the Holy Spirit lives in us. And the reason, one reason it's no good is because Jesus died. Yeah. And the Bible says, and we, we didn't look up the scriptures, you all you know this, but the veil of the temple was rent from the top to, yeah. to the bottom. Yeah. Now, would you say it was that? Did you say something? No, I just said it was okay. 22. So it, it was torn in two. So that shows you the passing of the old mm-hmm. to the new mm-hmm. covenant. Yeah. And that's what we're underneath today. No and I know it's something you like. I mean, you yeah. like talking about the covenant. You like talking about those things. Uh, Ashley likes talking about mm-hmm. those things. I know that's a big part of your ministry that you, you, you like to discuss. I mean, when I yeah. heard your minister back a little bit, you talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so here... We see we went from the old to the new, and to me there's a very significant difference Mm -hmm. of how the Holy Spirit was in the old and how now he operates in the new because uh, in the old it was really around, like Mm -hmm. I said before. So they would have to go. There's one reference in the Old Testament of somebody being filled with the Spirit. Okay. And that person being filled with the Spirit were the workers who worked on the tabernacle okay yeah and then the wording the hebrew wording that's used there is literally like the holy spirit put these people on like a glove it's like the holy spirit was building the temple through the people that was the that's the only reference to the baptism of the holy spirit in the old testament of yeah. what we would see like in the new testament that is. well in the new testament you know back then in the old you would go to the priest to be to be led mm-hmm. for instance the uh getting the blessed break yes or no yeah but under the New Testament, uh, if you're reading and you're praying, you can be led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. We use the statement, and, and I know all of us has. You've used it, uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, I feel like the Lord's telling me this, or yeah. I feel like the Lord's leading me over here. Really what you're saying is the Holy Spirit, yeah. which is part of the function of the Trinity, yeah. is leading you yeah. 
to give or to help someone or uh, I know God's used you in this or I've got a word for someone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always use the instance and I get teared eyed sometimes because I was just so pleased that you were willing to obey the Spirit of God. I always use the story uh, of you when we were in Northern Kentucky and there was a police officer. Yeah. And God led you. We had to go in and take care of, get a driver's license or something. I don't know what it was. Yeah. And we, we came just moved. In, and you came, I came out and you were over talking to a police officer. Yeah. And they were crying because you had something you felt like yeah. you needed to share with him. And, and it was, it was super simple. It wasn't anything profound. I didn't read their mail. Um, it was the Lord told me. I, I felt, and what it was is I was actually listening to a podcast um, on prophetic ministry and what prophetic ministry, because there's, there's, and not to go off, um, but even the prophetic ministry from the Old Testament to the New Testament has changed. Yes. Um, primarily, so like in the Old Testament, you see this, this instant of where uh, it's in the book of Exodus and right before the law is given, God tells Moses, um, that you guys will be my own cherished nation. You guys will be a nation of priests. Mm -hmm. um, and then you fast forward a little bit further. And then Moses says, I wish that everyone were prophets. Because he was having the weight of all this on himself. Yes. He said, I want, I wish that everyone could hear the voice of the Lord like me. And then you fast forward into the book of Revelation. And it says that the Lord has made himself a uh, a kingdom of priests and then in first corinthians paul says and it's this is super controversial so i'm not trying to be controversial um we have the gift of prophecy there is the gift of prophecy but paul also says in first corinthians that you all may prophesy um there is there's certain levels of the prophetic gifting there is prophets there's the gift of prophecy and then there's people prophesying um, and so to a certain extent, everyone, what is, what is prophecy? Prophecy is hearing the Lord for yourself or for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and so as new covenant people who have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, all of us can prophesy to some extent. It doesn't need to be a zap from heaven where suddenly you're reading off somebody's social security number to know who the prophetic word is for. But it can be as simple as someone who says, hey, can you pray with me about this? And immediately you feel a direction of the Holy Spirit of like, well, I actually feel like this is what the Lord is saying right now. Or you're praying about something in your own life and the Lord highlights something to you or the Lord says, hey, go do this thing. Or um, usually what happens to me um, whenever, whenever I get a prophetic word for somebody, I see pictures. Um, I'll be praying for somebody, laying hands on somebody and the Lord will... Um, highlight something to me. So for example, the, the, the example that my dad gave just a few minutes ago of the police officer in Northern Kentucky, um, I had been listening to a podcast, um, on the prophetic ministry and how the prophetic ministry has changed from the old covenant to the new covenant. Um, and, and in that change, the person I was listening to said, you can all prophesy at the spirit's direction. The in first Corinthians, it says that uh, these gifts are distributed as the Holy Spirit wills, meaning it's the Holy Spirit's will to distribute these gifts. So they're all activated by faith. And so the Lord dropped something into my heart, and all it said was, go pray for that person. And all I saw was a car. I didn't, the, the windows were all tinted. I didn't see anyone in the vehicle. I didn't need, the car wasn't running. There, I didn't know there was anyone in it. Go pray for somebody in that car. So I got up, walked over to the vehicle, knocked on the window the window didn't roll down immediately so i turned around to leave to walk away and then the window started to roll down and it was a female police officer and i was i asked the lady i said can i please uh pray for you i was actually sitting over there in my car and the lord said to come pray for you is there anything i can pray with you about and she said um yeah you can pray for me but i don't have anything specific that i need prayer for now it when she said that my intention was just to bless her, was just to say, Lord, thank you for this officer, for, for what she does for let our me, community. Let me stop you right there then. Let me ask a question. So you just felt led, you know, you, you, you kind of felt that there was, or you saw in your spirit, mm -hmm. a car that you need to go to. You hadn't had a word, you didn't have a word mm -hmm. at that point. You just knew you needed to be obedient yeah. and go pray for someone. Yeah. So when they're in the window, you, in your mind, you're saying, I'm just going to pray a blessing on them. But then God give you some more stuff to say. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to so, understand that. Um, 
I said, well, um, okay, well, can I just pray for you? And she said, yeah, absolutely. So she stuck her hand out the door and I grabbed her hand. I began to pray for her. Um, and as I prayed for her, the Lord, um, in the spirit, I actually saw an image of an x-ray. And um, on this x-ray, I saw a black dot over a specific area on her neck. And so I ended praying with her. Of course, she's in tears. She's crying. She's saying, thank you. Um, and I said, was well, there anything else I can pray with you specifically, um, like for healing or anything like that? And she said, no. And, and there was almost kind of like this boldness that just rose up. And I said, well, what about the neck pain that you have from the car accident that happened two years ago? And I could like, I could see the words coming out of my mouth. Like, oh God, what did I just say? And she froze and her eyes got as big as bowling balls. And she said, how did you know about that? And I said, I feel like the Holy Spirit actually just revealed that to me. Can I pray for you about that? And she said, yes. And she grabbed my hand, pulled it into the vehicle and slapped it on the back of her neck and said, pray for it. And so the lady actually received healing that day. So people sometimes confuse prophecy with words of knowledge as well. There's a difference between words of knowledge and prophecy. In my ministry specifically, they kind of go hand in hand with each other. I can go from a word of knowledge to prophesying over somebody to receiving another word of knowledge to then pray for healing. The point that I'm trying to make is that we can all hear, hear, this, hear the Spirit. We don't need an umim or a thumim. We don't need to cast lots. We don't have you know, no. a cloud of a pillar of cloud or whatever it was and a pillar of fire. We, we have the spirit of God that lives inside of us. Well, the, the point is also, I mean, there's a lot of points that go down. You were brought up in ministry. Mm -hmm. So you were, you know, you saw those functions operate. Yeah. But to bring us back to things we're discussing also today is, and what he's trying to get to you, God can use anybody but you've got to, like I said a couple of weeks ago, you've got to bring in the Holy Spirit like you would a very special guest in your house. Mm -hmm. And I, I declared and talked about that last week. Like, for instance, you know, Jordan's here, and I asked him if he wanted, you know, something to drink, and he got a water. But, like, if Pastor Greg or my mom and dad, Amy Glenn, or somebody comes, and if they're going to stay all night with us, we always ask them what they like. Yeah. We, we let them know, here's a refrigerator, here's what's in it. And there are guests are so welcome to go and get what they want. It's the same thing. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit in our life mm -hmm. to go in every chamber of our heart, all four chambers, and have full access to us yeah. to be led by the Spirit of God. And that's what He wants to do. Yeah. And again, we're not talking about Jordan when we're in the gifts. So, but He's trying to bring out that everybody can be used. Yes. It's not just a five-fold ministry. It's every one of you. Yeah. And you might just want to come home. And it might be your kids. I know mom's done this to you before. She's either called you or when you lived here, uh, what happened at this time? Yeah. Because she either got woke up or she got quickened to pray for you right then. Mm -hmm. um, because there was something happened. Because that was the Spirit of God letting her know you need to pray for your son. Yeah. You, you, you need. Or so you might have, God might deal with you and say, I've got a word for you to share with your your son or your wife or someone else. Mm -hmm. um, that's the spirit. That's the reason you've got to allow him to have access and invite him into your heart and and let him have that perfect and complete will throughout your life. Yeah. And not just say you can go in every chamber, but this one that's been our problem for a long time. We want him everywhere we want him, but don't want him in places that we don't want him in. Yeah. And we just got to sell completely out. Yeah. Um, and it goes to Romans chapter eight fourteen. As many are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Mm. So that goes back to you getting saved. So you have the Spirit of God when you get saved, mm -hmm. because again, without the Spirit, none is His. So all of us, I don't care what denomination you are, what background you are, everyone needs to be and desire to be led by the Spirit. Yes. Uh, I mean, we've been on trips before, got ready to leave, and we turn around and come home. Mm -hmm. You know, we were going to my mom and dad's one time. We got over to, you, maybe you remember this, we got over to Lake Norman, mm -hmm. and me and Teresa looked at each other, and we just felt like we needed to come back home. We didn't need to go. We turned around and left, come back home. We didn't like that. My mom and dad probably was discouraged, 
but we felt in our heart we didn't need to take that trip. Yeah. That's the Spirit of God leading yeah. us. We didn't know what would have happened. Still don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. I believe God was protecting us from something. Yeah. So it don't have to be something big. Yeah. But everything God will lead you to do, he'll back it up in the Word. Yeah. That's the, the, the interesting thing about the Holy Spirit. And I, 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 I've even tried to get in the habit of not saying the Holy Spirit because that makes it a title when it's actually a person. Um, I, I, I say Holy Spirit as in I'm talking to a person. Um, whenever, um, you know, Holy Spirit, whenever I read in the Old Testament or whenever I'm reading in, you know, some of these stories of like the generals of the faith, like John G. Lake and Smith Wigglesworth and all this stuff, I'm always expecting some big grandiose, <laughs> like an angel rips a portal open and comes forward and says, hey, you've got to do this. And, and usually what ends up happening most times whenever the Holy Spirit is giving direction, if the Holy Spirit is... Um, providing clarity on something. Um, if the Holy Spirit, another way too that um, I didn't even think of going into is the fact that the Holy Spirit actually tells us who we are. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit speaks identity. Um, Holy Spirit, if it's reminding us who we are, um, you know, uh, I think it's Jesus was saying that the, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of righteousness, um, convicts the, the world of judgment and people of righteousness. Um, I may have messed that up, but, you know, whatever. Um, that, <laughs> Along the, those lines. The Holy Spirit convicts of righteousness and sin. So righteousness being our identity, the Holy Spirit actually reminds us who we are in Jesus. Um, so whenever we're, we're making decisions or, or whether we are uh, trying to... Um, I keep on going back to ministry because that's my context. Um, but... To be honest, all of us are in ministry. Back to the whole thing about, you know, the Lord had always desired a kingdom of priests. We are all priests, meaning that we all get to speak for God to people. Mm -hmm. um, so we all serve in ministry in some capacity, whether you're a mother or a father or a son or a daughter or you work at Walmart or whatever it is, you are a priest of the living God. Um, so we all serve the Lord in some form of ministry one way or another. Um, but... Nine times out of ten for me specifically, um, I've noticed that the Lord speaks to me through daydreams. Um, I'll be daydreaming, and then as I'm daydreaming, I realize I wasn't thinking about this a few minutes ago, but this is God-inspired thought. Um, and then also through reading the Word. That's the other one, too. I try to read the Bible at least once a day, once or twice a day in the morning, and the the Dad just said the Holy Spirit will never go against His Word. It's... Mm -hmm. 100% true. Well, I would also say that the word never goes against the Holy Spirit. Um, the, the Holy Trinity, Dad's talking about the third person of the Trinity um, in this series that he's doing right now. So many people within Christianity have treated the Holy Spirit like the ugly stepchild and just kept yes. it away because things get... I always joke that people have treated the Holy Spirit like the crazy uncle at family get-togethers. Like, it's fun when he's there, but it's actually really scary, and we would prefer him not to be near the punch bowl and to stay down in the basement. Um, so the Trinity has become Father, Son, and Holy Bible, not Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's true that the Holy Spirit and the Scripture will never um, contradict each other, but what has ended up happening, because the Holy Spirit, because Holy Spirit is a person and is this, I hate using the word mystical, but scripture uses that word yeah, that talks about the mysterion of God. Mm -hmm. um, I hate using that word, but because the Holy Spirit is this mystical entity, there's a power and a presence to it. It's been abused and people have gotten up and said, Holy Spirit said to do this. Holy Spirit yes. said to do this. Um, and nobody's willing to, I'll pick up my dad's Bible. Um, nobody's willing to go through this and dig through this. Um, to actually compare with what is being said. Um, and that's actually what we're told to do in that scripture that I, I talked about a few minutes ago. Paul says, you all may prophesy. The next verse says, so that everyone else can weigh what those prophecies are. Yeah. We're supposed to weigh what is being said, whether it's a personal word for me to one person, um, a prophetic word directed to, towards a church, or if it's from a prophetic ministry, meaning that this person is speaking on a national or multinational scale. Well, I mean, you brought up a couple of things there, and I'll, I'll go back to one very quickly about the mystical and uh, 
the uncle that you're glad there, but you're kind of ashamed he's there kind of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's where people, I think, are, I'm not going to use the word scared. I don't want to use that word. They're misinformed. Yeah. They don't realize the importance of the Holy Spirit into their life. But then you've got a group up here that's just pushing, and I believe in the the nine gifts, and I believe, I personally believe in tongues. I believe in all of that. Mm -hmm. But the unknown. Yeah. So they're scared. They receive Jesus as Lord. The Spirit of God's in them. And, you know, we would classify being filled of the Spirit. I mean, you went back in that. It's not just the tongues. It's the fire that comes with it that people need to be operating more in the fire than they do anything else. But that's a whole other message that maybe Jer Jordan will come back and we can talk about some more on that. But I think a lot of people are just, again, I don't use the word scared. No, it's scary. It but be might, scary. Okay, so that's the word I should probably should use then. Of the unknown. It's called the fear of the Lord for a reason. Yeah, but, but they're afraid of, yeah. of where this could take me and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to have more in my life. I'm going to tell you, when you allow the Spirit of God to have more influence in your life, you're going to be happier. Yeah. And you're also going to look weirder. Well, that's true. And they're going to talk about you no matter what. Yeah. Time, if you say you're a Christian. Yeah. Then it goes to, then we, we look at Acts chapter 13 and 2. And it goes on, you know, from the casting of the lots, and they picked the wrong person, as we, as you said, and you know, I've ministered on. It says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, now they mm -hmm. begin to spend time with God. They fasted. They pushed back some. They did quit eating pleasant food. Uh, they fasted. They prayed. They spent time with God. Then yeah. the Holy Spirit said, "Yeah, you know, sometimes it takes a little sacrifice." A little time spending with God, getting away from family, to get yep. the Spirit of God to say something to you, mm -hmm. to lead you. Sometimes, you know, if you spend a lot of time with God, He'll just do it. Okay, do this, do that. But sometimes maybe there's something that's pressing, something that you know you need direction on. And the way to get that is, I'm going to spend time with God. Yeah. We, we've all had to do that in ministry, but it's just not ministry we're talking about. We're talking to you just, and I don't want to use the word lay person because we're all called to spread the gospel we're all called as george said priest we're, we're all called into that mm -hmm. and i stressed a couple of weeks ago and it goes along with what you have said i don't care what you do in your church if you mow grass clean the toilets do it all if you're doing that as into the lord everybody when you get to heaven is going to get credit for that for everything that happened in that church every soul that gets saved you're going to get credit for it because you are part of that ministry you're ministering yeah uh, because it'd be kind of hard for anyone to show up, and we always look just at the five-fold ministry. And again, we're not talking about the five-fold ministry. We're talking about you as a person. But I want to stress, sometimes we just get our eyes on the five-fold ministry and saying they're getting all the credit. Everybody gets saved, they'll get it. No, if you're involved in your church, you're praying for your church. Mm -hmm. You are cleaning, you're doing things in your church because helps ministry is just as important as anything else. You get credit for all that. Yeah, I actually know a, of a story of a friend of mine who who works at a um, very well known ministry. I won't say what the name of the ministry is. Works at a very well known ministry out in California, um, and this person um, signed up to uh, uh, do envelopes in the back of chairs. Um, and with that also came the straightening of the chairs to make sure all the, mm -hmm. the chairs were locked in, in, in place and everything before every service. And this person, uh, for a week or so, had, had become very um, just downcast because they didn't feel like they were making a difference. Um, you know, they had friends who were on staff at the church that were preaching and teaching and leading worship and, and all that stuff. And they just said, you know, I'm just a, you know, I'm a chair stacker. I straighten chairs. I put envelopes in the back of chairs. And the pastor of that church gave a message um, talking about um, power of the one, the one person, um, no, doing what they are supposed to do, uh, whether it's by obedience or calling, um, makes a significant difference. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, well, then I'm going to do what the Lord is telling me to do. And, and the Lord told me to volunteer in this ministry. A week later, the young man was straightening up chairs in the sanctuary uh, putting envelopes in the back of chairs when another person walked in, looked at the chairs, um, and said, wow, like you, you have done an incredible job. Like, these are awesome. I've never seen chairs this straight. Like you're, you're, you're serving. Yeah. How can, how can I serve? How can I help? And the young man just out of habit said, um, well, how long have you been coming to the church? And the guy said, well, this is my first time at the church. 
And the guy said, well, um, are you a believer? And he said, well, what does that even mean? And so the man led the man to Jesus awesome. because the man came in and just looked at how straight chairs were. That's a true story. I'm not making that up. Well, see, that to me would be someone being, you know, the Spirit of God led that person mm-hmm. in there because the person was doing his his ministry mm-hmm. with excellence. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't realize that. And you, the what you do faithfully, the Lord will entrust more to you. Um well, let me let me say this, because I mean, I, I I think it's important right here. Then you can finish your thought. Uh, so really, the church growth of a church, we've kind of really relied on the pastor all the time, and sometimes it's if other people are doing their ministry with excellence, God will draw people to the church too. Yeah, like if you got kids workers doing it towards excellently, mm-hmm. you got the person fixing chairs. People come and got saved. They wouldn't know word behind the pulpit at that time. Yeah, it was someone doing their job with excellence. Yeah, and doing it unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. So go ahead. Was you going to finish something else? No, it was just that the what he did. Um, he personally didn't feel like he was making a difference, but in in serving out of obedience and faithfulness, um, he led somebody to Jesus. Um, for doing something like stacking chairs. That's just awesome. Yeah, that's one of my favorite stories. Because I've explained to you how I started the ministry, cleaning yeah. the ditch out and et cetera. Yeah. Um, in Philippians 2 and 1, I'm just going to read the last part unless you think we need to read the first part. It talks about any fellowship of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what we're talking about here doesn't come to you if you're not fellowshipping with God and with the, allowing the Spirit of God and fellowship with the Spirit. Yeah. And fellowship means to communicate, mm-hmm. to have time with. Yeah. Like, for instance, he knocked on my door today. We didn't know he was coming over. It was a blessing. I said, hey, let's do a tape together. Let's do one of my, my uh, YouTube videos together. But it's a, it's a privilege to have him. And so, you know, I love just us being around each other and having that communication with each other. I mean, before we started doing this, we were just sitting on the couch. Mm-hmm. And at first, we were just on our phones, just knowing he was here mean a lot to me it's the same thing just knowing the spirit of god's there should mean a lot to you mm. and fellowship with it yeah you know uh worshiping god you're fellowshipping with the father the son and the holy spirit when you do that when you read the bible you're fellowshipping with all three because mm-hmm. they all three agree as one but as you're fellowshipping and you're praying and you're worshiping and because I, I think you need to do it all together somewhat yeah. and you're reading the word the holy spirit will say yeah he'll speak to you and and, and he's done that for us Mm-hmm. You know, they've been different ways that God spoke and told me to do this for someone. They've been ways that God spoke for me to do that for someone. And it's just communicating with him. And there's nothing greater. And sometimes God will speak to you to do something and it sounds foolish to you. Mm-hmm. It, uh, like getting up and talking to an empty cop car. Yes. Or it could be financially God could speak for you to go give someone in your mind. They don't need it. Mm-hmm. And even maybe sometimes when you give it to them, they might not need it, but God's just telling you to be obedient because God's going to do something on the back end for you. Yeah. But sometimes even the person who don't look like they need it are the ones who need it. Yeah. Very so true. Don't, don't press that off. Listen to, the, to, listen to that spirit on the inside of you. Uh, then in Galatians 5, uh, and you can read it in your own time, verse 22 to 26, it talks about the fruits mm-hmm. of the spirit. Uh, and you and I have talked about this a lot uh, when you were at home and we've talked about it other times. Um, I have seen, and you'll amen me on this one, I have seen more people walk in the spirit that we would consider not people who pray in tongues than I do people who pray in tongues. Yes. And then you think, then those people, and I hate to say it this way, we believe in those gifts, both of us do, but it doesn't make you better than no one else. Yeah. And sometimes we think if we're doing this, that makes us better than, than someone who's not doing it. The main thing is, all of it, why would you speak in tongues if you're not walking in the Spirit? Yeah. Actually, I think that that's the in position the that um, Chuck Smith and Calvary Chapel came to. Um, so Calvary Chapel, Chuck Smith was a, a Foursquare pastor. So Foursquare is a, a denomination that I used to pastor, and it's a Pentecostal denomination. Chuck Smith was a Pentecostal pastor, but because he had seen abuse 
of the Holy Spirit, uh, meaning people abusing the gifts of the Spirit and everything. He made a statement at his church um, that no one was allowed to operate in the gifts of the Spirit unless he first saw the fruit of the Spirit operating Amen. in those people's life. Um, and I'm again, I back that 110%. Um, and so what ended up happening was that the church actually began to grow and thrive. It's actually kind of an anomaly because typically what's happening in the world right now, whether you're looking at the church in underground China, the church in Africa, the what we call the global south, meaning everywhere that isn't America and Europe pretty much, um, the growth that's happening is growth through the power of the Holy Spirit, um, meaning gifts of the Spirit operating, lives being changed and everything like that. Calvary Chapel is one of the first um, explosive church growths. As you, I'm sure you can find a Calvary Chapel church in just about every city in America right now um, that happened by purely the fruit of the Spirit and pursuing the fruit of the Spirit over the gifts of the Spirit. Um, and I, 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 just to go back to what my dad was saying a few minutes ago too where he's talking about uh, Philippians 2, what about the fellowship of the Spirit? It's important to remember that fellowship is um, is two ways. Yes. When we think of fellowship, we think of um, fellowship between, specifically in this context, between me and uh, the Father. Uh, fellowship uh, that's this way. Uh, but what we forget is fellowship that's this way, meaning between me and brothers and sisters that are in the faith as well. Um, this is actually um, the Apostle Paul's main point um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14, that whole section on the gifts of the Spirit, where he's saying that no one gift is better than any other gift. He's saying, you know, you, there's everyone, people were speaking in tongues, and then people were like, I want to speak in tongues. He's like, that's cool, uh, but that doesn't make you any better than the person who prophesies. That doesn't make you any better than the person who has the gift of healing. There is no tier level in the Spirit. There is fellowship in the Spirit, and it yes. goes this way, and it goes... Um, this way well we're going to close here in a few moments but we've got to make sure that you get what we're talking about on this uh, I believe if we have more of the fruit we'll see more true operations of the spirit in the church yes and in our personal lives yeah so again in your own time read Galatians chapter 5 22 through 26 it talks about the fruit of the spirit Teresa and I brought this out a little bit last week in our, our podcast but you know I want to see people walk in love and joy and peace and you know all nine of the fruit to me it's very important you'll win more people to Jesus mm -hmm. by them seeing those fruits in your life and I know you've heard this story before but I'm going to share it real quick I had someone I used to pastor a church and they come and told me they were it their calling was to be an intercessor. Mm. They prayed. That was their job. But they always sat back in the back looking as mean as a bulldog. Yeah. And they would gripe about anyone that got near them. Yeah. Now, they could say, and they may have been someone that interceded for the church, and that's cool and that's good. But if you're unapproachable and you're not allowing the fruits of the Spirit of God to, to move in you, you are hindering your ministry. You're hindering something that you say that God has told you to do. Yeah. So the fruit's very important. Yeah. And I think that if you are communicating with God through His Word, through prayer, through worship, that's one of the first things I would want in my life is the fruit. Yeah. And Some of the meanest people I've ever met have claimed to be kingdom people. Yes. And, uh, you know, Paul says that. Paul says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Well, don't the Bible say that I prophesied more than you all, but if I don't show love? Yeah, absolutely. It's nothing. What do you think does more for the kingdom of God to give somebody a prophetic word as you have a scowl on your face and said out of a heart of bitterness and anger, or uh, a prophetic word that said out of love and joy and said peacefully? Um, yes. Yeah. And with compassion. Yeah. With compassion. And, and we'll say this to you. And the Holy Spirit will never embarrass you. Yes. He'll never, nobody will come up with a word or, or anything to embarrass you. Yeah. Usually, if you're spending time with God, if there's something that you need to correct or do, God will speak to you. Yes. And if someone has a word where you have not listened to God, they'll tell you quietly. Yes. Not something to embarrass you. 
So that's something we all need to look at. But let's walk it. Let's walk. The first thing to me that we need to seek, and again, we believe in Acts chapter 2. We believe in the nine gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Again, that's, I know we've brought that up a lot, but we're trying to let you know the importance of allowing the Holy Spirit to use you. But we love all of those. We have seen those operate in different as aspects. He saw it in his ministry. I've saw it in mine. I've saw it in churches I pastor. But our emphasis should be more on the fruit. Yes. And then the Spirit of God will amen the fruit of God. Yes. And we'll see the gifts of God operate. But let's get the fruit operating in our church first. Yes. And uh, let's do this. I, I wasn't going to do it, but can you, you can open up in the Bible. I want to read Galatians chapter 5 before we close, verse 22 through 26, because I, I want people to understand what the fruits are. Yeah. If you don't care to do that real quick for me, son, I'd appreciate it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Okay, so they're giving you the definition or the direction of what the fruit of the Spirit. Anything you want, I brought out love. Anything that you want to pull out of that or anything? Um, I would also add, um, I think it's... Um, one of the most neglected fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Um, I've met a lot of people in my life. Uh, Paul, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, and I don't know why I keep on harping on prophetic ministry. I think it's just because I, that's where I've seen the most abuse when it comes to the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, Paul makes some very interesting statements when it comes to uh, the, the ministry of, of prophetic ministry and hearing the voice of the Spirit. The first thing he says is that um, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet, meaning the prophet has self-control over what is said. Um, so if, like my father was saying, if someone embarrasses you with a prophetic word, they meant to do that on purpose. Yeah, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. In fact, Paul later on says um, that uh, holy, the, the, where is that? But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. If someone gives you a prophetic word and you don't feel strengthened, encouraged, or comforted, it's not the work of the Holy Spirit. I can assure you that 110%. I agree. I agree with you completely. Let's finish with this. I'm going to let you read Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, and then we'll, we'll close. This now out. to him who is able to do so exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Exceedingly means abundantly, super abundance, very high, beyond, beyond measure. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, right? Mm -hmm. According to the power, the miraculous power that worketh in us or the showing forth. In other words, the Holy Spirit will show forth. He is the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit will, you won't have to tell nobody if you're allowing the Holy Spirit to work in you. Yes. It will be seen. Yes. Manifest for everyone to see. Yes. So you, because he desires to do it exceedingly yeah. above anything we could imagine without measure. Yeah. We limit the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit doesn't li limit us. Yes. We limit him. So listen, Jordan, I'm glad you're with me today. Um, and we appreciate it. And one thing here, I was just, I'll let you read that last statement. You leave that one word out. Our minds cannot... Even imagine the wonderful power of God that is working in him who is filled unto all the fullness of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to saturate your life yeah. in every aspect. Thank you for being here today. Absolutely. I love him, boy. I'm so proud of him and all four, all four of my kids. Mm -hmm. God is doing a work in each and every one of them. Um, we're going to pray for you. Uh, if you haven't received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, all you've got to believe is that Jesus died on the cross and he rose the third day and you've got to ask him to come in your life and forgive you of your sins. It's very simple. It's not a drawn out. You don't have to confess your sins over and over again. You just ask him. Then you walk in the newness of life. Mm -hmm. But Jordan, I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer as we close uh, this uh, segment of our program. And uh, then we will see you next week. And we love you, but he's going to finish in prayer. And as we do that, we're always praying God's best be your spirit, soul, and body. Lead us in prayer, son. Yeah, Lord, we just invite you. I, I invite you right now, Lord, to um, have fresh encounter with those who are listening and watching this. Lord, I thank you. Uh, so many of us have uh, 
met you through the word, Lord. And so many of us have stopped there. Yes. We've read Acts. We've read Luke. We've read, you know, the New Testament. We see all these awesome things that you do. But so many of us have actually been introduced to the person of you, to the person of the Holy Spirit. So right now, Lord, I just invite everyone watching this or listening, everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you invite them into a personal encounter with the person of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that you begin to show forth in the lives of those who have these encounters with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come and rest on every individual that watches this, this video, that listens to this, Lord. Lord, Holy Spirit, that, that you show forth the power through the, the, the working of miracles, Lord, uh, even the mundane miracles, that you show forth your power in reminding us of who we are in, yes, in Jesus. And that you show forth your power in having us bear fruit through you. The fruit that we listed. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll see you next week. Love you, son. Appreciate yep. you. And Teresa loves you too.